Welcome back to the channel and a preview of day one of the Dante meeting which gets underway today at your cat 150 and exclusively to this channel you can win £25 in cash. All you have to do is like the video, be subscribed and pick the winner of the 150, the 225 and the 3 o'clock. The first couple of voices at York and if you can pick that £25 will be transferred your way so make sure you do enter that as I say exclusive to the channel and we've got some short priced favourites in a few of them races as well so it might not be as hard as it seems to make sure to get involved even if it, even if it is for a little bit of fun. Now I'm going to start off previewing the 150 and I'm really excited to see Garcy who has been very strongly supported over the night. This horse opened up at about nine to four, it's been strongly supported into 13 to eight. And I think this horse is gonna take the world of beating. He's probably the only one in the race that looks like he could be a long way ahead of the handicap. He's rated 94 and he's won his last three starts pretty impressively. He won at Chester by 15 lengths, followed it up at Newcastle. And off handicap debut, he made a mockery of a mark of 85 at Kempton. That was in December, so he's had a break, then comes back as a four-year-old, you'll expect a little bit of further development within this horse. And he's got group two entries at Ascot. He's entered in the Hardwick in June. And I think this could be a stepping stone on the way. He could be very well chucked in off a mark of 94 for a combination who won this race last year with Illarab. That's Tom Marquand and William Haggis. Both of them always seem to do pretty well at York. And at 13 to 8, I just think he might be one that's very unexposed and ahead of the handicap as some of the others may have already shot the shot somewhat that don't seem to be chucked in and up to a lot of improvement and I do have concerns about the second favourite Forza Alter is 78 rated horse at the end of the day of course that means it does carry a feather weight but I just have a concern about backing a 78 rated horse in a race where the top weight carries is running off a mark of 106. I think even though he does carry the featherweight, I think he might just be outclassed in this field for Kevin Ryan and Rowan Scott. But I think Garcy is going to take the world of beating. And if you are doing this challenge to win £25, I think sticking with the favourite in the first race wouldn't be the worst decision if you're looking to win the money. Now, on to the 225, and these are the races that I do really enjoy. It's a very competitive 22 runner handicap over the six furlongs. And I think Nomadic Empire at 9 to 2 looks a pretty fair price at the end of the day. He's got a good cost from winning here off a mark of 93 at the September meeting here. He backed that up when fourth in the Coral Sprint Trophy. That was a very good fourth off a mark of 102. And his recent comeback was a pretty good one behind Avogadro and Showalong, two trained by Tim Easterby. Now the horse, Nomadic Empire, ran off a big word that day and he probably was quite unlucky. He just didn't get the gaps when needed. And he's gone up one pound for that. And I think he would have come on for that one for David O'Meara, who always does very well in these handicaps. So he's probably the right favourite at five to one. But I think with bookmakers paying a lot of places out, some are going five, six, seven places, I'm pretty sure I'm going to take a chance on M ball right down at the bottom. Horse number 18, and it runs off a mark of 87. And I think that could be a little bit below what he could operate at on his best day. He won his season on return last season at Oedgar, I think it was. That was a very good run, and he goes well flash and on the fast ground he really seems to suit going off that so I think he would have a little bit of a chance on seasonal reappearance he used to be trained by Richard Hannum and had a mark up in the mid 90s 95 96 I think it was now trained by Ruth Kite's come down to a mark of 87 he somewhat lost his way towards the back end of the season but finished off with a very good run at Chelmsford City where he's just touched off in a decent enough race. This is a very strong race on our turn, but I just think under a featherweight, and he could be operating below his last winning mark. So I think at 66 to 1, you could just be playing a chance. He's a long shot at the end of the day, but I don't think, considering he's the biggest price in the race, I don't think he'll be coming last. I think he'll be running well enough. So he could just be worth a little bit of a risk at 66 to 1. Now, the last race I'm going to preview is the Duke of York, the Group 2, 3 o'clock. It's probably one of the bigger races 
on the cards today and I'm pretty far excited to see what Minzal can deliver coming back as a four-year-old trend by Owen Burrows who has had a very good time of it lately. He hasn't had too much runners but he's operating pretty much at a 40-50% strike rate I think in the last couple of weeks so he's very much a trainer in form and it'll have to be for this Shadwell operation. You might or might not know that they're scaling down their operation and they've binned some of the best trainers. Mark Johnston doesn't train for them anymore. Sir Michael Stout doesn't train for Shadwell anymore. So you think Owen Barrows would want to get a big notch winner in soon just to show that he is the right trainer to be training Shadwell's horses and I think this horse could be the one he's put you in exposed for a four year old he's only had the six career starts and he's been in the top three in all in five of the six starts it was only his debut where he was out of the places and I think the latest run at Ascot in the champion stakes that was a pretty good run behind Creative Force and Glenn Shiel. He didn't have much cover that day and it was a very disrupted three-year-old campaign. So to finish off with a run that good, beating some horses who he really opposes today, I think that was a very good run. And the course form for Minzal is very good. You'll remember him winning the gym crack in 2020. It was two years ago now. He did that very impressively. And I think this horse is very much one horses for courses. I think the York track suits on, on better ground on seasonal reappearance where he has performed well on the reappearance when he was second at Ascot behind his marvellous after a long break. That was a very good run that day. So I think coming into it on fresh, better ground will probably suit. I put this horse up at 11 to 2 anti post just about four or five days ago. He's now 5 to 2, but he is probably short enough in the market but I think he's still a little bit of value at 5-2 to two, and he would be my nap on the day one racing at York so thanks a lot for watching don't forget comment the winners of the 150 the 225 and the 3 o'clock and you might have £25 coming your way and if it, no one wins it today I'll be rolled over to tomorrow so make sure you check out my video tomorrow to enter that as well don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time